Good morning. Just it's late morning now. I wasn't going to do a video today because I've done quite a few lately. Um, but kind of unexpectedly, it's very wet outside. And I have been to the, um, not the immediately local market, but um, the one in the nearest sort of town. It's very different at the moment from how it would typically be. Because normally you'd go there, sit and have a coffee, you know, maybe chat to people, lots of stalls, lots of people. And there, I think there are about 10 stalls maybe at the most. And the entrance to those 10 and the spaced out are controlled by the police. So you have to show your form d'attestation, which says why you're out, when you left home, where you were born, how old you are. Incredible. And have passport and identity papers. Um, so it's a very different experience there. Um, and yet it did feel kind of exciting just to go out because it's a little bit further away, probably about 5k, maybe a bit more than that. Um, there. So, and I needed some fuel for the mower. And it's, I think, it, I feel as though, I mean, we are due to, in France, due to have the lockdown eased a little, not a great deal, um, next Monday. The biggest difference is that whereas we have not been um, allowed to leave the home other than for essential things and only to, for example, walk within one kilometre, from Monday we can exercise like cycle out and uh, walk out within a radius of 100k, <laughs> not going to walk 100k, I don't suppose, well, you never know, I suppose they might. Um, and we won't have to carry a form d'attestation. Um, and some shops will be open and small group gatherings will be allowed with social distancing. So there's an easing um, and it's got, there's different, uh, different levels of easing depending on whether you're in a critical zone or in a kind of freer zone. And whether it's because of that, um, whether it's because kind of it's be, people are beginning to talk about um, how to move forward now from this, the severe lockdowns that most people have been in. But I find there's a lot of sort of uh, work requests coming through. Um, all of a sudden, you know, I'm coaching more people online, um, doing kind of online, all, all online um, meetings, um, possibilities of work, one of which wouldn't be online, one I think would involve traveling to somewhere like California later in the year. Um, but, but, and suddenly there is this kind of flurry of work possibilities and actual um, and it was, I had an interesting reaction to that. Um, I suddenly felt like, uh, constrained and I thought that was, re that's really interesting because when the lockdown, the confinement started here, I had this tremendous sense of freedom and I have had that incredible sense of freedom to do what I like, when I like, and I realise what habits um, and what, what constraints I put on myself. So very often when I would wake up and think, ah, now where have I got to be? What time have I got to do something today? And realise, oh, I don't. <laughs> I can do what I like when I like. And I still sometimes have felt, ah, yes, however, I must be up by this time. I mean, I do like to get up very early anyway. Um, but I realized I was reacting to um, patterns that were relevant for the way I was working before uh, the confinement. And then I realized I had and felt this tremendous freedom and everywhere was quiet. I mean, I'm in a very particular place, which I've said, you know, with a lot of space, great neighbors, um, we've had beautiful weather recently um, 
and I felt kind of almost shocked the other day when I noticed a vapor trail in the sky because I realized we just hadn't had them. I don't know who's flying um, and where. As part of somebody saw a vapor trail that had done a U turn, that was just kind of amusing. Whether they changed their mind midway, I don't know. Um, and it's a kind of um, a, a paradox, what would you say, an irony that in a time of constraint, I felt freedom, complete freedom. And now as those constraints are being talked about being lifted, I feel a, um, a kind of reaction to that, a sort of pressure to that. I mean, I have a very overall, I have theoretically a very free life. Um, I mean, being independent, being single, being independent, theoretically, I can do what I wish, although um, being independent and self-employed doesn't necessarily mean that because there are requirements about, you know, sort of work and income and so on. Although I think that's one of the things that perhaps needs to be challenged for many people for the future as to what we need and uh, how simpler life we can live. And it's interesting that paradox of theoretically we have a freedom, but we actually don't feel we do. When we have a constraint, maybe, or for me anyway, I felt this incredible freedom. And it's often like that, a kind of yin and yang. Um, I mentioned, I spoke in an earlier video that you know, I work in a very unstructured way at one level. It's one of the things that I really learned from working with Jean Early, my mentor over the years, is to go with what's happening in the moment within the context of bigger outcomes. We're going to um, do another kind of talk and probably kind of illustrate that, just start from square one and illustrate how we let our thinking develop. Uh, we're probably going to do that next week. Um, and so to just go with, to have a, to engage with what's current and then go with what's happening in the moment and then study the structure of that as a way of learning for ourselves and as a way of offering that learning to other people. And I remember Jean saying very early on that to be able to do that, you do need to be very structured under the surface. Um, and I think that's, and I am. Um, and it's one of the things that was really developed when I wrote my book, because it was important to structure the whole book, to work out the kind of outline of chapters, the threads, the format, the patterns of the book, to know the topics in depth. And I recognise that when, I, and it was a long time ago when I wrote the first edition of NLP at work. And I remember, because I'd kind of locked myself, I mean, it took me two years to write the first edition. Um, but I remember the latter part of that, and I would typically more or less shut myself away in France and write. And I remember the first course that I went back and did. And I suddenly realised I had changed. I had this very structured way of thinking um, about the topics a real depth to that and so to be unstructured on the surface it's important to be very structured um, under the surface within yourself so to speak so i have a very i would say very detailed understanding knowledge of patterns language patterns behavior patterns and so on um, so that i can spot them you know, in the moment, which enables me to work uh, freely uh, without, without structure. Well, there is structure, but without following an agenda, for example. I'm not going to stick to things at a certain time um, because they've been written on a piece of paper because that just disconnects me, I believe, from the group. And on that same theme of opposites, um, yin and yang, kind of. Um, David Gordon, who I spoke about in the last video, who was one of the trainers on my original NLP training, and a brilliant, fun, <laughs> really 
provocative trainer. And it's interesting how much of the things that he did and that he said have stayed with me, have stuck with me, impressed themselves at the time. And I've mentioned some of those in other recordings. And one of the other things um, that he said was that it's as if, think of people as wearing t-shirts, which we do, of course, but he said, you know, metaphorically, everybody's wearing a t-shirt. It'll say one thing on the front and it'll say something quite different on the back. So as an example, you know, with the structure, it might be on the front, you know, my t-shirt says, hey, I'm really, you know, hang loose and unstructured, but on the back it says, and I have a very detailed, in-depth structure uh, behind that. So it would be like saying, so like saying, um, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a tough bastard, you know, it's maybe something you might have, but actually on the back, um, it might say, I'm a, I'm a real softy, really. So that what's beneath the surface is a counter to often what we experience on the surface. And you, I'm sure you discovered that with people that you can meet people who seem like really hardened, you know, individuals. And actually, you know, when you get beyond that surface, that front, there's a real soft center. There's something that's counter to the image that's put. I suppose um, the ideal would be that, you know, what you see is what you get, that um, uh, it's what's, what's shown is what is, um, but it's so often not the way. And this is very important for uh, those of you who are coaching. It's like, don't accept what's on the surface. Really, the learning lies in sometimes what the person themselves don't know for themselves, but it's like what's under the surface. So, um, so I'm really exploring this feeling of suddenly freedom has changed. And I'm very, very, I mean, it's a very, very high value for me. Um, freedom, freedom to do what I want. And I noticed that the minute that somebody um, starts to tell me to do things, depends who they are and when it is and if I've invited it, but I feel a resistance. Um, I, I, that's probably why it's very rare for me to um, work constantly with, with somebody else because there will be some constraints in that. Um, I mean, I do work with other people. Um, and it's a beautiful experience to do that. Um, but they, and, I'm seeing a few books this morning, and they are usually those people um, who have, who we've been together for some time, we know each other, we have a great rapport, and we know each other very well. Um, and I recognise that uh, I still like the freedom to do what I want to do, that's, that's, that's my style, that's what works. And, um, you know, if, for example, someone says, well, right, let's work together and we'll do it this way, I feel a resistance to it. And I suppose, I think what's happened in this um, confinement is that I think I've become even more sensitized to what's important. Um, I'm able to contrast um, different situations. And so there we are. It's like, what's the, what's the uh, counter message? What do we think is true on the surface and what's the counter message? So question, what question would be appropriate for you? Maybe you've already identified a question for yourself. So what, you could take the immediate thing, for example, the relaxing of the um, restrictions. What's your reaction to that? So that's more of a content question. So what's your reaction to that? Um, do you feel a freedom or a, uh, or a sense of, of restriction? Whatever, those are my words. Um, 
what's the message do you think that you put out to the world? What's on your t-shirt, metaphorically speaking? Um, what would people say? Yep, that's 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 your kind of virtual message to the world. And what's on the back of the t-shirt? And how available and apparent and transparent is that to other people? And I say this because, as well, I think there's going to be a lot of to create a new future. I believe that the values, well, I want the values with which we go forward to be quite different or enhanced from the ones that have been dominant in the world so far. And the values I believe that are important going forward to the future are trust, truth, vulnerability, kindness, and so the question is, how do we, if you share that view, um, how do we embody those things? I hope it's a bonjourne uh, for the rest of the day for you.